we have a full API that allows us to do integration with multi-cloud. So whether it's an RFID integration, whether it's a uh, manufacturing with Matthews uh, integration, whether it's a freight integration, you need a stable uh, API, and this is what we have at, uh, you know, at the Rick Group with our TBO4 solution. We have 3D Digital Twin for reporting, and this allows us to easily, easily visually uh, report on things uh, such as empty pallet spaces, but we go a bit further, which allows us to do optimization reporting on users, the travel distance, um, their picking distance, could the order have been uh, quicker by moving some products in, in different bin locations. So we look at dynamic bins. Sales at the Rick Group, our website, and our YouTube channel is all kept up to date. So the next part here is we're going to run through the SAP and the TBO4 integration and the Braj from our sales team will be uh, running this process. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I'll be taking over and running through the process of the SAP transactions along with TBO4. So yeah, let's start from the scratch. So yeah, this is TBO4 home screen. As you can see, this is like the home page of TBO4 where you can see you can key in the login details with the username and the password. So once you have a username and a password, a picker can have a picker username password. For example, a receiver can have its uh, receiver username and password or a stock take person can have its stock take username and password. Depending on different transactions done in the warehouse, you can have individual username and password and then you can log in. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the demo login that we have. You can see there are a list of multiple login coming up and you can sign into TBO4. So once you sign in, what you will be redirected is to the homepage screen of TBO4. So the homepage screen of TBO4 will have the menu options at the top, where if you can, where if you click those menu options, you can see the drop downs expands with a lot of other options as well, which is picking. If you click on the goods receipt, you can see the receipt from production. You can click on inventory, labels, deliveries, and the different menu expands as well. So there are a lot of other options um, that can be uh, enabled in this menu. So before we move into the transactions, we will be showing you the SAP side of things as well to actually have an understanding of how TBO4 works with SAP. So what I'm going to show you is the SAP production order. For example, the first stage uh, for the demo is the production order process, which we'll be running through. So you can see there is a production order I've already created in SAP. So this is the product, finished good product, and these are the components inside the product. You can see the issue method is back flush, and the production order number is 377. So once the production order is created and released, so then we go into TBO4, click on the receipt from production option here. You can do goods receipt, receipt from production, or you can click this option. It just leads you to the same screen. So once you're in the screen, so you can see there are plenty of production orders open in our demo environment. So depending on what you want, you can type in or you can scan the production order number. So in this case, I'll type in the production order number and then it then filters out that production order number for the finished good product. So now what I'm going to do is click on this production order document number. So once I click on the document number, then I'll be redirected to the production line screen where I can see what is the finished good for the production. So you can see the quantity that is being planned to produce is four, but the completed quantity is zero in this case, the received quantity is zero in this case. So what I'm going to do, show you right now is I'll scan a bin location and scan the finished good product or an SSCC related to the product, provided we are presuming that the SSCC is produced or you can have the SSCC produced from our system as well. So let me show you examples of barcodes that I'm going to scan before I actually do the scanning. So as you can see here, I bring up in the screen, so these are some of the sample barcodes that I'll be showing you today while scanning in TBO4 for how the feedbacks look like in TBO4. You can see these are been location barcodes, item barcodes at the top. And if I scroll down, you can see the load truck delivery barcodes as well as the SSCC barcode that I'm going to show you in the production order process as well. So anyways, let's move ahead. So let me bring back to the other screen so that it helps me in scanning. So yeah, first things first, in the production order line screen, what I'm going to do is scan a bin location. So let me scan a bin location right now. So now when I scan a bin location, you can see there's a success, gives a feedback to the user instantly, and you can see the bin code gets highlighted at the top. And once the bin code is selected, you can then scan the SSCC, which is related to that particular good in the production order screen. So when I scan the SSCC here, you can see the SSCC gets recorded. There's a feedback, instant feedback to the user given. And whatever the products for that SSCC is, it gets 
recorded with the quantity as well. So you can see the receive quantity when I'm scanning the SSCC comes up with that quantity received as well and the SSCC gets recorded in the system as well. So at the end, if you are happy, you can scan multiple SSCCs belonging to multiple products and the system will record as much as you scan with the quantities and the items that are associated with that SSCC. And if you're happy, uh, you can confirm the process. And what it does, it confirms the transaction from TBO4 and in a few seconds, it goes and updates the ERP and creates the issue for production and the receipt from production as well. So you can see this is SAP. So when I uh, open SAP again, you can see the production order is now grayed out. The lines are grayed out. If I check the relationship map, you can clearly see once I complete the production order from TBO4, it just created a receipt from production and an issue for production as well. So now if I double click and open the receipt, you can see the plan was four, completed is four, comes back from TBO4. And also you can see what are the components that, that are issued as well. So this is like an end-to-end -end process, how you can do a receipt from production. You can do it in multiple ways. You can print labels, you can produce SSCC labels in TBO4 and then print them and scan them. Or if you have a predefined SSCCs, we can then scan it in TBO4 to then record that SSCC as well. So there are multiple ways of doing it. So yeah, TBO4 can handle all the different types of combinations. So yeah, this is pretty much on a tablet device and an RF scanning device. So now you can see this is the screen, how it looks like in a smaller devices. So let me go to the picking screen. So if I click picking, you can see the picking screen loads instantly and then it comes up with the respective orders, the names. So if I want to dive into a pick here, I can dive into any pick. And then you can see clearly it fits well in a very small device. So you can see the bin codes, the item description, release quantity, pick quantity columns. They're pretty much in one screen. You can then rearrange those columns, hide those columns, depending on the flexibility of the user and the usability of the user as well. So this is the look and feel in the smaller devices. Let me show you some other screens, which is the receipt from production screen. So you can see all the production orders in the screen as well. You can scroll down pretty easily. And then basically you can dive into any production order as well. Um, disconnected freight screen again, uh, looks and feels really good. So you can see the weight columns, the service code columns, the pick ID comes up pretty well in the small screen as well. Uh, the other part is the load truck screen. So you can see clearly the load truck screen is also, if I choose the north, it, it come up in this particular screen as well. So depending on what you want, you can have this selected and you can see it comes up in the load truck feature as well. So it's pretty um, usable to use in small device as well as bigger devices so because you can resize those columns rearrange those columns depending on the usability and you can then do transactions with the WMS so yeah that's pretty much it from my end hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions just email us and we will be able to answer any questions you have thank you